Hi friends, welcome back to Commonly Chaos Homeschool. My name is Davine and I'm mom to four kids aged nine through 13. And today I thought I'd make a video on how to get started with homeschooling. If you are considering homeschooling and you're not sure what you need to do, I hope this video will help you. Stick around to see the six things that I think you need to do as you're preparing to start your homeschooling journey. I see a lot of people asking, how do I get started homeschooling? So I'm going to be covering the six steps that I would take if I were starting homeschooling today. And I'm also going to be making follow-up videos for probably most of these steps. So just stay tuned if you're interested in seeing these following videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see the videos that are coming up after this one. So step number one is you need to know the laws of your state. Each state has different laws on how to homeschool and what you need to do. So what you would do is just go online and Google your state's homeschooling laws. So here's an example here. I'm going on to Google. So I live in Washington state. So I would just type in Washington state homeschooling laws and see what shows up and then look for the one that looks like the most, uh, which one is from the government. And I will warn you that it can be a little confusing to actually read the laws. So I would additionally search a few more things. I would find my actual homeschool laws, the actual documents and try to read that and try to understand that. And then the second thing I would do in this section is you can look up HSLDA. That is a group of lawyers that advocate for homeschoolers rights. So you can look at their website and I will link all these sites below, anything I mentioned below. So you can look up HSLDA and see what they say your homeschooling laws are, but they may not always be the most current. They're usually pretty accurate, but it might not be exact. So you do wanna know your own state laws. And the third thing in this section of researching your state laws is personally, I would go on Facebook and I would look for homeschool groups that are specific to your state or your region, and then do some searches in those groups as far as the laws of homeschooling. Most homeschool parents can tell you what the laws are for the state. Of course, you always have to double check your actual laws requirements and make sure it lines up with what people are saying but i find that it it helps to clarify things a bit on what you actually have to do or how to interpret what you're reading when you're looking at your government site as far as your homeschooling laws for your own state so that's the first thing that is important that you should do so the second thing that kind of has to do with these homeschool laws is is your child currently enrolled in a school if your child is enrolled in the school, you will need to notify the school and let them know that you are withdrawing your child. So you can just contact your school that your child is at and ask them what they need there. I think generally an email or a letter, I said, I just submitted a letter to the school saying, I'm withdrawing my children, I'm going to be homeschooling them. And that's all I did. So I submitted my declaration of intent to my superintendent at the beginning of the school year that I started homeschooling and I sent an email or a letter to my school, the schools that my children were in, withdrawing them from school and letting them know that we were going to be homeschooling. So that's the second thing you need to do, withdraw your child from the school that they're currently at. If they're not in school yet, then I guess you don't have to worry about that step. The third thing that I would encourage you to do is to think about de-schooling. Are you going to de-school? And if so, for how long? Now, if you're a new homeschooler, maybe you don't know what de-schooling is. Let me tell you, I did not know myself de-schooling meant or what it was. So let me try to explain it to you. So de-schooling is a period of time when you have withdrawn your ch child from school. So let's say they have been in school. So it's more, more towards for kids who have been in public school or in a school setting. You take them out of school and you don't actively do anything school-like for a period of time. So the reason why people say that de-schooling is helpful is because if you're homeschooling, it's, chances are something wasn't working in the public school that your child was at, or perhaps you're just feeling called to homeschool and maybe you might've done it all along, but say you're withdrawing your child from school, 
something wasn't working. So de-schooling is kind of a time for you and your child just to try to figure out a new routine of what it's like when they're at home. Give your child some space to decompress from school. A lot of kids are withdrawn from school because it was a stressful environment for them or things weren't going well. So just give some time to relax and a time to kind of learn more about themselves. So maybe you'll be able to see what kind of interests they have or what they gravitate to in their free time. So it's just kind of a time of exploration and just letting your child explore what they might be interested in. And it's kind of research for yourself as far as when you start homeschooling, what, how might your child learn best? What are some things that interest your child? And perhaps this will give you a better start to your homeschooling time. So many people who talk about de-schooling and talk about how important it is, they recommend like a month for every year your child was in school. And this is just to try to get out of the public school mindset for them so that they're not thinking of school as public school and for you to be able to think about and explore the possibilities of how school might be different than it was for your child when they were in public school. Maybe you want to do a, a week or a month for every year your child was in school. What we did personally, we did not de-school. And the reason why we didn't de-school was I started kind of homeschooling when they were sent home March of 2020. And so they were still public school students. And when they were home with us, we just started schooling them the way kind of a mix of public school and what they were being sent home as well as what we wanted to do as their parents. And we weren't officially homeschooling yet and we hadn't decided to homeschool yet, but we saw so many benefits from that time that that's kind of when we started deciding to homeschool. And then we were also the parents who during the summer, we tend to give our kids reading, math and language arts a little bit every day anyways, not every single day. But in general, if we weren't out doing something special, we would be doing some school like that anyways. The reason for that is I have quite a few kids who retention is quite an issue. And if we stopped all summer, they would just not remember things when they went back more than the average child, I would say. So we have always kind of schooled in the summer and did our own thing in the summer just to keep retain those facts. So we didn't really de-school when we started. So that was a personal choice of ours, but it is highly recommended by many homeschoolers. And I would definitely check that out if you are starting homeschooling to decide for yourself, if that's something you think would be beneficial or not for your child. So the fourth thing I would recommend is research homeschooling styles. If you are not homeschooling yet, you may not know that there are so many styles and philosophies of homeschooling out there. And I think that researching these things and kind of starting to feel for yourself what style might suit your family and your child will really steer your homeschooling in a certain direction. Some examples of homeschooling styles are Charlotte Mason, traditional, classical, Montessori, Waldorf, unschooling, forest schooling. There are so many different styles. And so what I would suggest at this point is just, I did a lot of research myself before I started officially homeschooling my children. And I figured out a little bit what I thought would work for my child and my family. And I started in that direction. I won't say that just because I started a certain style that I'm going to be on that style forever. But I do think it helps you move forward and get started with homeschooling to kind of know what looks like it might work for you and your family and keep you from making some of the mistakes that you might make if you didn't know all the possible ways to homeschool. So I went on YouTube and I just typed in homeschooling styles and I watched a lot of different homeschooling style videos I will be making a video talking about some of the most popular different styles. Uh, also Google, there's a lot of blogs that talk about homeschooling styles and there's even quizzes. I will find a quiz and I will link one, a quiz below if you'd like to try to take a quiz and see if it'll tell you what kind of homeschooling style you might be. However, I feel like if you're coming out of traditional public school, your results may tell you that you are a traditional 
homeschooler and that might not be the way your family should go. I really recommend that you look into different styles and just kind of see what might work for you. Maybe settle on two or three styles and just think about how that might look in your own home and in your own homeschool before you get started homeschooling. So step five, when you are tr uh, trying to move into homeschooling or transition into homeschooling is to decide what curriculum you're using. So this is why I feel like homeschooling styles is so important. Once you know your style or styles, you can start researching more specifically curriculum that goes with that style. If you just go out there and type in homeschooling curriculum, you are going to be bombarded with thousands, thousands of options. And that is going to be very overwhelming for you as a new homeschooler, um, homeschool parent and homeschool child. So once you know your style, you can use that style to specifically Google or type in that style's curriculum and see what things show up. And then it might be narrowed down a little bit and you can type in like most popular Charlotte Mason or most popular traditional or most popular classical homeschooling curriculum. And that will just give you a place to start with your curriculum. Another thing that you need to decide is, do you want to go with a box curriculum or do you want to do a more mix and match style? Or do you want to create your own curriculum? So a box curriculum is when you find a company and what you do is you say, I have this fourth grade child, please give me the fourth grade materials. And so then they will send you a large box with all the things that you might want for your fourth grade child. So the benefit of this is that if that company is reputable and you've looked, done your research and it looks like that company's materials would work for your child, you don't have to pick and choose every single item. You can say, I want the fourth grade curriculum. They send it to you and you have your whole year's worth of stuff there. There, there might be some choices within some of the curriculum in that boxed curriculum, but you won't be making as many choices. You won't be running to as many different sites. It's just a package, a package deal for you. So that's the benefit of it. You don't have to think so much and it's not a bad way to start. However, when you get a box curriculum, you probably will get a lot of material and it may not be what you're able to do when you first get started or it may not be that every piece is what you end up wanting to do with your child. So if you're new to this, maybe you wanna try a box curriculum, maybe not. So another thing you can do is once you've determined what style you are and a few of the different curriculums that are in that style, you can pick and choose. So you could say, well, math, I like this style, but I think, and so there's these different curriculums that would cover that style. I think this math would work best for my child. And then for language arts, you could say, well, this writing program looks like it kind of fits in my philosophy. I think it would work. This writing program, this spelling program, this grammar, program. So you would be picking and choosing from different curriculum companies what you want to do for your child that might suit your family and your style. So that's kind of the mix and match approach, often called eclectic homeschooling. And finally, you might want to just create your own curriculum. So if you have a younger child, it's not necessarily important for you to cover everything all the time. So maybe you wanna do a more unit study approach. And if you wanna do a more unit study approach, maybe you wanna follow the interests of your child. So your child's interested in dinosaurs. Maybe you want to just go and get a bunch of library books from the library, read dinosaur books together, have them write some sentences. So really this is determined a bit by your homeschool style and also how much research and thought you would like to put into your curriculum. So the thing about the box curriculum is it's minimal research. The price tag might be medium to high because you are letting them do the choosing and they might be giving you more than you necessarily need for that year. If you're getting mix and match, your research time might be a little higher. Your budget will just depend on what you're picking for each curriculum, but you can, you can decide what your budget's going to be for each subject. 
And then when you're doing your own curriculum, there's a lot more flexibility. However, your time, you have to take your time into account. So those are some ways that you can decide on your curriculum. The sixth step is to actually purchase your curriculum and your supplies and get started. I have a few recommendations as far as all that. When you are purchasing curriculum and you're getting started, please do not just purchase everything all at once, anything you could possibly want and need for that year, purchase it all and just get started on everything that first day of school. I think one of the best pieces of advice that I got from one of my homeschool friends when I first started homeschooling was do a slow start, do an easy start. Don't, don't just like, okay, first day of school, here we go, we're gonna do every single subject and a whole lesson in every single subject. What I usually do at the beginning of a school year is I have about a two week period where we are slowly adding in our subjects. So day one, we might just kind of take a look at what we're, we might be doing. Think about your first day of school when you're in public school. There is a lot of writing your names on folders and organizing your pencil case and your desk and learning the rules and all that. So homeschooling is the same. You might wanna just start with like, okay, Here's an introduction to our school and let's just start with a lesson of this. And then the next day, maybe you'll do that and then a new add a new thing on. And then the next day you might do three things and just slowly build up to whatever you're hoping will be your full-time schedule. And if you get to the point where you're feeling like a little overwhelmed by all the things, it's okay to not do all the things all the time. You can alternate your subjects just slowly build up to what you want your schedule to be like using the curriculum that you want. So you don't have to go out and buy everything. Maybe you just wanna decide on first a math curriculum and maybe a language arts curriculum. Start with that. Pick those things up, start with those, see how things go. You'll learn more and more about your child and about yourself and about your teaching style and about their learning style from just doing those two things and you'll be covering the bases. And then maybe you can think about if you wanna start doing history or if you wanna start doing science or you wanna start doing art or you wanna start doing those other things and you'll have a better understanding of what you should purchase once you've started with a few pieces of curriculum. And then as far as supplies, I always hear the, see the question in Facebook groups, what supplies do I need to buy? Really think, just think about what supplies you're going to need for the subjects that you currently have. Math, maybe you're going to need some lined paper. Maybe you want a, just a three ring binder and some pencils and then your textbook. That's all you need really for math. Maybe you want a calculator if they're more advanced. Just think about each subject. So writing, what do you need for writing? Well, probably some pencils, maybe some lined paper, maybe a notebook or two. And you can just go from there. Then you decide you wanna do some art. Purchase the supplies that you need for the type of art that you're going to be doing. So you don't need to worry about going out and you don't need everything to get started. You probably have most of what you need at home as you're starting. and. Just, you can slowly add the more fancy things as you go. Maybe a printer if you print off a lot of PDF curriculum. Maybe a laminator if you want to laminate a lot. Maybe a three hole punch. But there's really not a lot of supplies that you need when you're first starting homeschooling. So those are the six steps that I would take if I were starting homeschooling right now. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or if there's something you need me to go further in depth in. Also like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I can't wait to talk to you again and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.